Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interestinglife.com. You're joining me on board good old narrowboat Tilly and today I've got a very long video for you all about my original trip back home when I first bought Tilly. We'll have a look on Google Maps at exactly where she was and the route we took in just a second. But basically, she was nine days of travelling away, as it turned out. So we're going to go through a few of my old video diaries from the time, as well as read a couple of quotes from my actual diary at the time, where I was writing pages a day in this, so there's loads to draw from. So before we dive straight into the proper video, I wanted to just set the scene for you with a few general words, and hopefully a few clips will come on the screen at some point. And really at this point in my life I was 25 it was a beautiful summer in 2012 I thought for years I want to get a boat I want to get a boat and then went out and actually bought a boat to live on and the fact that it was so far away led to this incredible trip back and I always remember I got took out there and dropped off for a couple of days when I actually bought her the first time and it was that usual thing of wow look at this I'm full of emotion and excitement and fear and terror at everything that was going on and my diary entries from those first couple of days I spent uh, two nights on board on my own and one entire day of just me on my own out somewhere that I'd never been before with a boat it was fantastic but I was far too scared to move her on my own so at some point uh, my friends came out to pick me up because I actually had to go to work on one of the evenings that I woke up on the boat and as I was well 49 miles of road away at that point I obviously wasn't going to be able to walk it like I do sometimes so that was the sort of original couple of days on board of just getting used to it and then we had this little trip just to take the boat up to Great Haywood Marina and this shows how little knowledge I had of boats and Tilly at that time. It was the first time that I'd started Tilly's engine, took me a couple of times of twisting the key to get it started, then as the nose was pushed out to start travelling along I had this horrible moment where I couldn't get the boat to go and it was just I was revving the engine more and more and she would not move and then I finally realised that I'd actually put her in neutral so that was the level of boating knowledge and Tilly experience that I had at that point. The very first time that I started the engine took a couple of attempts and then the very first time that I tried to move anywhere I was stuck in neutral for the first couple of minutes just floating around and drifting closer to a canal boat moored up on the other side. So that wasn't the best start ever, but we had about a 10 minute trip just to take it up to the actual marina and it was the start of an absolutely beautiful relationship. Little did I know when I went back home to Oswald Street to work for a couple of days and then get dropped off with my friend a couple of days later to actually start the proper trip home that it was going to be firstly the most incredible trip and just the greatest times of my life in many respects at that point but also mingled in with that we're going to be some of the most stressful difficult and hard times of my life up to that point as well. So we're going to dive into Google Earth and have a proper look at where we are talking about and the beautiful rural trip that we took and then we're going to dive straight into day one of the video diary where me and my friend Helen are tackling a long distance boat trip for the first time ever. Again to add a bit of perspective into it neither of us had ever been through a lock on a boat before so there was an awful lot to learn but my goodness me what a time it was. And here we go. You can see this is our massive route that was 96 miles and 60 locks, which is why it took so long to do, minus the um, other problems that arose on the way that we'll get to later in this video. This was Great Haywood Marina, our starting point. And as you'll see as we zip out, it's not at all a direct route. If you look at a straight line from one to the other, I mean, even travelling by car between Ellesmere, where we're heading now and having a look, that's Blackwater Marina that we're zooming in on here at Ellesmere itself. And 96 miles and 60 locks by boat, about 49 miles or so by car, which would take you maybe an hour and a half of travel. But like I say, this was a nine day epic boat trip. And I'm just going to zip around here and show you just a few bits just to demonstrate what the environment was like that we were travelling through as you really can't see that much um, off the canal when it is in such a vast expanse of countryside. This was where we just touched the very outskirts of Wolverhampton, which many people in the UK will know is not very rural at all. 
But once we got away from there, as you can see, it was just tiny villages and towns at best. And as we headed up and away, you can see just how much it becomes a patchwork of fields, an absolutely beautiful thing to see from above and, well, to see from right in the very middle of it, to be honest. I just want to show you this random place for future reference in this video. This is the junction where the Langofflin Canal starts and branches off from the Shropshire Union Canal. And this also, for future reference, is where I first got stuck in a lock, which, as you can imagine, was not the most relaxing time of the entire trip. But I just wanted to note that so you can see just where it is. And again, what a lovely stretch of uh, countryside the canal runs through up on the Langofflin. So now we've had a look around and seen where we're going, let's actually dive into day one of the video diary. So then, we've just had the first 40 minutes travel. I'm not sure how far we've come, maybe a mile or so. Uh, very hair raising stuff where the canal was all busy at the beginning. But at the minute, I'm trying to desperately cling on keep us in this general location as we've just hit the first lock would you like to see something i think is very scary of course you would like that just something a little bit disturbing to see out of the camera window really so that's day one over and done with um we're moored up about nine miles from the marina that we started at been through five locks and i'd say we've probably done about five or so hours of travelling, so it's been a very steep learning curve and an awful lot of stuff has been learned about locks and handling the boat in general, and especially the speed that you can and can't travel at. Um, well, it's just an amazing experience and I've, I've absolutely loved it today. It's a bit terrifying going through the locks at the minute though, when it start, the boat starts moving forwards and backwards towards the gates and the sill and oh my goodness me. Um, but, here we are, night time has fallen, people are making their beds, and by people I mean me and my friend Helena, and well, we're all safe and we're all happy, so it's all good. So until the next time, check out sortofinteresting.com, boyonaboat.com if you wish, yes I am that boy. Um, well, until the next time, like I say, see ya! Bye. Wow, how nervous and shy and quiet was I speaking to the camera back then. Admittedly, I was in an unusual and quite stressful situation and I just wanted to go to sleep, really. But I quite like to look back and see how things change. But what you'll notice over these video diaries that we're about to watch is as things get, start to go wrong and it gets a little bit more stressful, you're going to see me get more and more down, talking more and more slowly. And it's just generally my sort of decrease in mood of like oh my goodness me this is a lot harder than I expected it to be is very much visible from just my actual body language and the way that I'm talking and so on but one of the things I'd like to do before I skip to day two of the video diary is just read out a few quotes from that day in this uh, diary here so today was the start of the big trip all the way to home somewhere the other side of Ellesmere on the Langofflin Canal Helena is on board and going to sleep as I write this. I don't know what I would have done without her going through the five locks we have done today. Ah, oh, that's endearing. At least I appreciate it. Um, it's been an amazing experience, really good fun, but with plenty of scary and stressful moments, mainly around the locks. Luckily, we had some help on the first two, so that our first lock alone was less worrying. And also then, showing how I was worried about absolutely everything is this little quote. We are moored up on two pins that I had to keep changing the positions of until finally I figured out the correct, or at least a better position for them, in relation to the boat. They seem pretty secure, but we have the whole night to last at the minute, so let's not speak too soon. And there was just that idea that an empty canal with barely a few miles an hour flow of water on it, for some reason I was obsessed that the mooring pins were going to come out and we'd float off down the canal or something like that. And again, those are the sorts of things that I can never imagine now being too worried about. Anyway, let's get on to day two of the video diary. Ah, hello folks, well here we are on day two. Uh, set out at 19 minutes past 8 this morning. It's now, I don't know, around 5 o'clock in the evening and we've pretty much been going non-stop. 
So we've put a good few miles and a few more locks, which is probably the last lock of the day just up there being wine ready. Um, yeah, it's all going well. It's a little bit terrifying still. There's been a few bumps and scrapes going on the bridges today. Unfortunately, I've done this first major paint damage on a bridge. Um, something that I didn't think about in yesterday's vlog, sorry you got a little bit of a close-up of me there, was that little chimney on the back, which goes down to the boiler, got caught going under a bridge, and you may or may not see from this how much of a dent it's had put on the front side. But, it's all good. I'm a little bit concerned now that I know that I'm going to be on my own and there's about 40 locks between me and home still. So I think I'm going to have to call in more reinforcements. Uh, but yeah, this is day two. Like I say, it's about five o'clock, so there's, I don't know, a good three hours of travel left in the day. Who knows what may happen. Uh, last night there was just a random uh, great moment where goodness knows what time it was. Just happened to look up and see through the window, full moon, in the classic sort of, I don't know, a bit of a horror film moment, I suppose, as various clouds are passing in front of it. And I thought, yeah, this is the life. Anyway, for now I'll sign out and catch up with you tomorrow. Again, it was another great day of learning and good boat travelling, as you can see. Despite the bumps that the boat did take along the way, one of the things that I note in the diary is that we did 9 locks and 23 miles on that day, which as our second day ever, I think was pretty good going. There were certainly a few moments, as I say, that it wasn't ideal, once again, but it's all part of the learning process. And just to read out a little bit from my diary again, what a day it's been. Loads of progress, 9 locks and 23 miles. We're now moored under some massive trees lining both sides of the canal at Nozel. There are plenty of other boats around, but it is absolutely silent here. Amazing. There was a very scary moment when the engine heat warning light came on. Very worrying, but when it is considered that the engine had been running for nearly 10 solid hours, it is not to be a surprise really. We pulled over and let it cool and everything seemed fine after a while, so let's hope for the best. Now, as you're about to see in the coming days, hoping for the best, unfortunately, didn't really solve the issue. And one of the things that I mentioned in that video is that I was going to be on my own and Helena basically for day three stayed on board and then left in the evening, leaving me for day four to be on my own and travel on the boat for the first time. How well is that going to go? Well, let's catch up with day three first and then move on to day four. It's as far as the eye can see. Well, it's about 8 o'clock on day 3 and I am now on my own for a couple of days. Um, so I'm currently at a point where I don't feel confident enough to try going through any locks. So I may make just a few miles progress up to Adderley where there's another 5 locks before the huge Audlum 15 locks. So that's going to be fun for the next couple of days. Um, yeah, so this is day 3. And my goodness me, it has, it has been an epic day. <laughs> Done five locks, uh, travelled out 14 miles, would have travelled further except for one minor um, thing. There was an awful lot of smoke coming from below the deck and the engine. Uh, so I had a bit of a panic and emergency and pulled over to the side. Everything sort of cooled off and seemed to sort itself out and then started up again within about a mile It all started smoking and goodness knows it was kicking off left right and centre so Called it a day there so tomorrow I've got to hopefully sort that out and see what other people think and hopefully there'll be no major problems So we've had an absolute pour down and soak in at one point and it's also been thundering as well so all in all it's been it's been a rather eventful sort of terrifying foreboding day full of omens um hopefully everything will be lovely from now on i'll sort out tomorrow see what different boaters and maybe some mechanics and marine engineers think about the engine situation but fingers crossed that everything will turn out fine and Hopefully pick up some more shipmates on Saturday and attack some more locks, get a little bit closer to home. It 
ignoring all the um, general smoking engines and goodness knows what that goes on with that and obviously the fact that I'm still like 50 miles away from home and got 30 plus locks still to try and get through and no real idea of who, how or why or when that's going to occur. Um, I do absolutely love boat life so far. I mean, it's just, um, it's everything that I thought it would be. I mean, literally just travelling along at a few miles an hour on the back, uh, seeing herons, moorhens, uh, kingfishers flying around, and I mean, some of the sights of nature and that that you see, and you get that close to them that there'll be like a kingfisher yesterday perched probably four or five feet away as we went past, right at eye level, just amazing. And then pull over when it gets to the evening time or whenever you really want to during the day, have something to eat, get the good old whistling kettle, kettle going so I can make myself some of my beloved various dried noodle snacks. It is just absolutely brilliant, absolutely loving it so far. Um, I am looking forward to getting home so that there isn't all this sort of weight of how much further I've got to get and the sort of bit of a time limit that I'm on to get back uh, ready for work in a week's time and all these locks that need doing and all that sort of stuff. I mean, once all that's gone, I really just can't wait to be tootling around my local area with a few miles a day, maybe more up for a couple of days and then another mile and oh it's just everything's just exactly as I hoped it would be so far and I mean I'm really looking forward to getting the fire going I need to get myself a new cowl for the top maybe a little more ornate fancy uh, chimney but all in all absolutely loving it so far and well I'm going to be on my own for the next two days I think at least so I've got plenty of tinkering time because I'm not going to be doing much travelling in that uh, time. So yeah, absolutely loving it and well, this is day three. Stay tuned and we'll see how many days it takes to get into a home-like region and well, what happens along the way. See you around soon. So that was day three, the day that it really started to fall apart. Obviously, I didn't know what was going to happen on day four, the first time that I ever tried to move Tilly on my own. So we shall see how that goes. But I've got a feeling it's not going to be the best experience I'll ever have on a boat. It's interesting from this day three video, though, because I talk about a lot of stuff and talk about the things that I've enjoyed and seeing the wildlife and so on. But it's also quite interesting to me, at least, to see that even though it's really stressful and it was really stressful especially to me at the time being so nervous of absolutely everything to actually have something that was a genuine problem of smoke rising from below the deck and warning lights flashing and all that sort of stuff I was still just about realising at that point hang on I'm in Market Drayton I'm about 50 miles of actual boating from where I want to be it looks like the boat is not in the best of health at the moment and also I'm way beyond like reach of walking, biking, busing or anything like that to get to any of the people that I know and for any of the people that I know to get out to me it was really awkward but it was still that first realisation even on day three of the, no, the first trip home of me going, hang on, it's really stressful and there's all sorts happening, but as soon as I actually moor up, as soon as I've tied the last knot in the ropes, I step onto the boat, step through the back door and I'm already home. And I never realised until watching these videos back, just how early on in my boat life that I'd realised, oh yeah, no matter what's going on, if I have terrible problems and just think, right, I'm going to moor up and I'm miles from anywhere, at the very least, I'm mooring up and I'm already home. I was very interested to see just how early on I discovered that idea and it's something that I talked about, well I've talked about it endlessly since. Right, let's get on to day four and see how this goes. Well then folks, this is day four, it is just gone ten past two and oh my goodness me, what a day. So yesterday we were having engine problems um, and then I was left on my own to my own devices on board. So today's been the first full day of the trip back that I've been on my own and because there's locks a few miles up I'm only going to travel up there a bit later hopefully if the engine holds spoke to one chap who said he had smoke coming up and put some water in and everything was fine 
and then my mind and my heart was at ease and everything was good and nice and calm. Then a bit further up I spoke to an engineer who started talking about all sorts of things that cost thousands of pounds to fix. So that set me terrified and worrying for the day. Um, so anyway, I walked up a few miles there to the locks, came down, um, probably about half a mile away, I don't know, a good distance away. I could see Tilly back end out right across the canal. I was like, oh, what now? So I ran probably the fastest I've ever run in my life down to find that the back mooring peg had come loose in some uh, very marshy, boggy grass and soil and she was just all over, flapping all over the place on the canal so managed to fetch her under control pretty sharpish and I was just moored up again and my goodness me, are those pins hammered in. Well folks, I don't know if you can see the moon disappearing behind some clouds there. Um, I moored up a few miles, maybe one or two outside Market Drayton. I'm unfortunately facing the opposite way to the way that I wanted to be and I've travelled, like I say, maybe one or two miles in this day. Um, my apologies, this place is an absolute tip as I'm once again doing some cleaning. Oh, well, I can honestly say this has been the most difficult, stressful and just demanding in every way day of my life. Um, you saw my video earlier about all the stuff with engine problems yesterday and then the boat coming untied and all, all sorts of stuff like that. Well, I finally made the move, there's a fly buzzing around, I finally made the move to um, get up to the Adderley Locks just up here. Probably was running the engine for about 10 minutes when the temperature light started flashing and it was all kicking off and then about 20 seconds after that it was like a big poof and a huge cloud of steam came from underneath the uh, deck and as you can imagine that was a terrifying moment so I managed to pull over to the side and luckily wasn't too far to walk back to a boatyard where somebody came out and walked down with me back to Tilly and we had a, well, I say we, uh, this chap had a look underneath and fiddled about and attached a pipe back that had popped off and had all sorts of useful advice and things that I just had no idea about, obviously, <laughs> as you would imagine being me. Um, then we turned her around and took her to the right yard and he... Uh, tightened up the bolts keeping the engine strapped down to the base of the boat. Um, I asked him how much uh, I owed him and well I, I won't repeat his exact words as this is a family show but he told me to move along and was kind enough to have gone well out of his way and beyond even the help that I'd asked him for to um, let me have it all on the house. So, once again, I mean, well, it's very, very generous and the excellent sort of spirit of the waterways. So, that was a huge boost and a help. Um, I've been having to keep topping up a new water thing that I've completely neglected uh, until now. And I'm literally having to top that up every few minutes as I'm moving along. So, that's a scary thing. I don't know if that's going to last or what, but... I managed to travel for about an hour, I'd say. Um, I got up to the Adderley Locks and was about to moor up for the night and everything was back on plan, only to find that there's a lip of stones underneath all of these mooring um, points and, well, the stern, or the stern was having none of it and was just literally rubbing straight against it and I'd say it was about a foot from the edge and just couldn't moor up. So I had to turn around and ended up facing the wrong way and goodness knows maybe a mile plus away from where I wanted to be. My um, family's coming out in the morning to try and hopefully get me through some of these locks. Fingers crossed for the engine holding up and everything running smoothly. Uh, yes, um, at the minute I've been doing a bit of cleaning and once again I've settled back and just 
can't tell you how much I love being on the boat. I mean, I'm in the middle of nowhere at the minute. Um, sorry if this is a terrible rambling, sprawling video and a shaky camera, but as you can imagine, it's been a big, it's been a very long, very hard day today. Um, but the fact that I've been out here on my own and having to deal with it all, I do feel as if it's been a very important moment uh, in my life today to have actually, for the first time ever, been an hour away from any sort of familiar, friend, family or anybody that I know to come and help me out and that to actually be a grown up and deal with all these problems myself and actually get help from people who know what they're doing and speak to strangers to come and help me out um, and I do feel as if it has been an absolutely monumental moment and even now I think I'm underestimating the sort of turning point in my life that it's been uh, like I say fingers crossed for tomorrow I hope that everything goes well I mean I'm keeping an eye on the engine and everything and there's very little more that I than I there's very little more sorry that I can do so wish me luck and thank you very much for watching uh, we'll check in again soon and that is just about as deflated and down in the mouth that you will ever see me it's incredible when I look at how long that video went on and on and on for but it shows just how much I was thinking and how sort of how I was in my mind thinking it was the biggest thing ever that had happened and the way that I'm talking about it as this great turning point in my life and it certainly was scary it was extremely stressful like I say, to actually be out there completely on my own, well away, separated from friends and family and all that, and have to actually deal with a proper real problem, and particularly just the typical luck that it happens on the first day that I'm actually on my own. And um, One of the things that I didn't mention in the video, but I mentioned in the diary, and just by the way, the actual days of the boat trip normally have about two pages per each day for a diary entry, this day four had five solid pages of writing like that about what was going on and what I was thinking. And one of the things that I mentioned in the diary, but not in the video, which was hugely important, which again at the time I didn't realise, was that the mechanic had shown me where the, well, I knew where the header tank was on the boat, just above the deck, just towards the uh, sort of back end of the actual cabin of the boat. And I didn't really know what it was, but basically he pointed it out and he goes, right, this is the header tank. If you pour water in there, it just goes down into the engine to ensure that the head gasket is covered in water to keep it cooled and all that sort of stuff, which was total and utter jargon. And I didn't really know what he was talking about. But basically he said, just keep pouring water into there and see what happens. It should at the very least get you home because we poured water and it was disappearing. And at the time, we did, well, everybody for the first two years plus of me being on Tilly had looked at the boat and looked at the leaking cooling system that had started at this point and said, hey, well, it's a raw water cooled engine, blah, blah, and it made everything a mystery. And then last summer, somebody actually looked at it and said, that's not real water cooled. It's actually got a pipe underneath the water level that goes around on the outside of the boat. It's not particularly important at this point in this video, but it was a total mystery. So we were just pouring in water and it drain away in no time. But he said, keep doing that and it should get you home. So that is exactly what I did. And as you'll see, things start to look up again. But my goodness me, how many hundreds of litres of water I poured away into there and of course didn't realise until two years later that I'd actually just been pouring water straight into the header tank which was then leaking straight back into the canal from below the boat. Anyway, day five coming up, let's see how that one goes. So then folks, here we are on what I believe is day five. I'm starting to forget even myself what day it is. Um, it's been another big day, managed to survive any engine issues but poured gallons of water into the engine and it seems to disappear. Is it leaking out? I don't know but it seems to be doing the trick at the minute so pouring water in every few minutes. This is the first official refilling of the general water supply. 20 locks today so that's about a third of all the locks on the entire trip. So now, hopefully, if all goes well, going to be on the Nangothlin Canal tomorrow and starting to really get close to 
my good old hometown. Um, yeah, so we've had thunder, we've had absolute pouring down rain, and all sorts of stuff going on. But, well, after all the trouble for the last three days, just once again, like I've said before, look at this for an end to your day. Somewhere up there is Namwich. Then here we are, nothing but fields and silence. There's a marina over the back there. And then somewhere back down there is Audblum and an awful lot of locks. So you may be able to see the absolutely incredible sight of the Audblum locks. So it was a good hard uh, few hours getting through 20 locks as you can imagine, but well, it's even an awful lot closer to home all of a sudden. So, that's the latest progress. Let's see if I'm still smiling tomorrow. Fingers crossed. And that was day five. Despite the fact the video's so short and I look so sort of run down and in that video, I mean, I'm literally swaying around with the camera. That was mainly because even though we'd only traveled five miles doing 20 locks, despite the fact that I got me mum and me nan and me granddad on board and we were going through them, it was an extremely long hard work day. And there'd been pouring rain and thunder and all sorts going on. It was the day that across a lot of England there were flash floods and all sorts going on. So it was really, everything was happening. But despite the fact it was so, well, just hard work, it was physically hard work, if anything. And because I'd already been on, like, the previous sort of weeks travel down, I was already a bit worn out. And that was the day that really, just in the physical sense, wore me down. And even though I was sort of, oh, God, just let me go to sleep. Just let me go to sleep. Come on. I start the diary entry. I'm going to read you five words, the first five words that I wrote for the diary entry that day. Today was a great day. And that's all that you need to know. It was everything. Just take it slow. Keep pouring the water in. And basically, that was when I was really getting into the, yep, yeah, however far we get. I'm happy with that because it's all progress and it's all going forwards. And although the rest of the trip wasn't without its problems, this was really a sort of the high point after the bitter low point the previous day. This was like, wow, this is the recovery. Everything's back, firing all cylinders. Let's do this. Helena had been dropped off back on the boat to do another couple of days on board of the trip. Uh, late on, last thing in the evening. And, well, my goodness me, let's get back to day six and see how it goes. Welcome to the Langoffling Canal. Got a set of four locks to go up here. Helen is just helping um, some people come down. And then we are officially on what I've always considered my home canal. And well, here is Tilly, what I now consider home. My goodness me, what a trip it's been to get here. And there's still an awful long way to go. <laughs> Well, that's a pretty grim looking cloud over there. There's rumbles of thunder again. We've had some exceptional sunshine and amazing weather. Had all sorts of drama in the locks being stuck. As you can see, there is very little room for manoeuvre down here. Been having all sorts of different, well, a new beep occurring underneath me feet here. Um, oh, another tough day. And you may hear that thunder in the distance. Yeah, so it's, um, it's looking like it could be another big end to the day. Um, let's have a think what else is there to say. Uh, I don't know, about five miles from Renbury and the delightful Renbury lift bridge. So we'll see if that's down when we get to it. Uh, about five locks, I think, between us and there as well. So we'll see if we can get there tonight or just a little bit closer at least which it may be tomorrow fingers crossed all being well and then well no locks until I've passed the point that I really I suppose consider home so fingers crossed let's hope for the best again now that's a video that shows just how physically drained and absolutely worn out and tired that I was 
it's an interesting thing because I remember that day and I've got it written down in my diary but the reason that video is so short and misses a few things out is because as we carried on later on in the evening the engine started to overheat and a bit of steam came up and all that again so because of that I sort of was just right that's it let's stop for the day and I didn't really do anything then just cleaned up and generally tinkered around and then wrote in my diary but if I'd have done the proper video on the boat at night like I was intending to then I would have mentioned that that first lock the clip that I showed saying there's very little room for manoeuvre and how tight and narrow that lock was was taken after I had already gone in there and got wedged because I still had the fenders on the boat down on either side despite the fact that the sign had told me to raise me fenders and that very first lock is so notoriously tight on the uh, junction to get onto the Langoffling Canal that there's some boats that even I know from Facebook that literally turn up there, try to get in the lock and physically cannot fit into the lock. So then have to just make new arrangements and literally just can't go there, which I just think that's incredible. And just imagine if I'd have turned up on Tilly and I'd literally not been able to get it onto the Langothlin Canal, because that's still like about, must be about 45 miles or so from down from this actual mooring spot. It's still a long, long way. It's not like it could have been like, Oh well, it's only a few miles of canal. I'll just have to live out here and get get on my bike and go into work every day. Um, so yeah, that's just the random side note there. And again, I write as the last thing in my diary talking about how much um, about all the things that had been going on and all that. But I just mentioned as the last thing, um, just by being on a boat, I am living the dream. And when I hit the home area, I will be running the engine very rarely anyway. So if I can get Tilly to limp a few miles a day, things will get easier every day. And that again sums up that I was already realising and thinking, oh yeah, if I can move the boat and get a little bit closer, I'm happy because that's all that I can ask. So yeah, moving on, let's get to the next day. So then, day seven, here we are on Monday, my goodness me, um, about two, three miles from Whitchurch and got about the last nine locks of the trip and then, well, certainly will be on the absolute home straight. Moored up for a while to give the engine a rest, a lovely little country-like spot in the usual way, keeping the hatch open to have a look down in the engine, water to keep filling up goodness knows how many gallons it's gone into the cooling and so yeah running a bit leaving it to rest for a long time running a bit more and well hope for the best the final three locks are in a staircase and my goodness me there's a 10 step set of instructions here now when we look up through the kitchen window how is that for a sight about maybe three metres away across the cut here and there. He's been there for a good 10-15 minutes now. So we've got dogs, we've got <laughs> cake from the neighbours. Life's good, life's good. That isn't actually my dog. One of the things that I mention in the video and then mention very happily in the diary is that that was the end of the locks for the main trip. So basically between Whitchurch and Langothlin itself there are only two locks and those are down at St Martin's, they're called the New Martin Locks and because of their location I knew it would always be easy to get friends on board or family out so we could go up and down them together. So as I say at that point I was still terrified of the idea of doing locks on my own and it would still be a long time before I'd do them on my own. But one of the things was that once it became so easy to have people come out and of course because it was all new and exciting all my friends were constantly coming out to the boat and we'd be tootling up and down and all that sort of stuff. So I was very pleased to get the last of the locks out of the way. And of course, Whitchurch was also one of the places that, to me, it was a place that I'd heard of and I knew, I knew, and I knew that I could get on a bus and even if it was a long way around, I could at least hop on a bus, 
get to another place, get a bus from there and then get to Oswald Street. So as far as I was concerned, I was already in like the home sort of home area, despite the fact it was very, very far away. And since that time, I have done many long bike rides in and out uh, of town from that area. But that's for another video. At the end of the video, you saw the cake and the dog. And I'll just read you the last bit of my diary entry for that day. The day ended on a high note when the kids from the boat moored behind us, who we've been passing and passed by all day, fetched two slices of cake over for us. On that note, I love boating more than ever and hope but dare not assume that I will be a little closer to home this time tomorrow. Definitely upbeat, so how did the next day go? Oh, it's about half one-ish, um, this is day eight and it could well be the final day, I'm not 100% yet but Ellesmere is about nine miles in that direction. Um, come down about three miles or so from Whitchurch, done three lift bridges. After eight days of travelling and all sorts of trials and locks and goodness knows what along the way, I just cannot believe that I'm finally getting here. I mean, look at the weather, look at where I'm going through. I mean, this is just, this is just perfect. Day 8, just drawing to a close. I'm walking down the towpath from good old Tilly who started to overheat. I didn't let it start smoking or anything but we had some bubbling water spewing onto the deck so I thought, right, let's call it a night. We are two miles from literally the town of Ellesmere and literally two miles walking I will be in the town. No, don't worry, she's not floating off into the middle of that anywhere. Well. I can't believe I'm actually minutes away from being in Ellesmere after eight days of travel and all sorts of engine problems getting wedged in two separate locks uh, some long old days but some absolutely epic times and I mean some of the things that I've seen and done on this trip I will never forget I mean a uh, huge huge um, ah. Tunnel 57 on the Langofflin Canal uh, on that side is Ellesmere. My apologies about the video before, I feel a bit cut before you see me as a blubbering wreck. But I just wanted to say really, I just cannot believe that after eight days of travel, all of the highs and the lows and all the work and the trouble and the, well, all the characters and incredible people and places and just everything all that unbelievable amount of travelling and that uh, water under the bow has finally led me here. I mean, it's just amazing. I am home with my new home. Um, oh, I suppose, well, it's a little bit dark. I will disguise my general emotions by carrying on. Well, watching that clip back now, I really don't know how I feel because it's fetching back so many memories and all the emotions and it's just the incredible relief that I was actually there and look at this, I'm actually walking into Ellesmere and that's it, I'm officially back, I'm officially at Ellesmere and I remember that day um, in the morning my dad came out and so too did my unborn sister still in her mummy's tummy and we went from Whitchurch and did a few lift bridges just along the way and then they had to go and then as you saw it was the beautiful weather and saw a few people along the way that I've seen ever since and it it was just brilliant it was really just a great day of weather family and actually finally getting to the goal but there is also that thing of god do I actually want it to be over despite how difficult and how stressful it's been at times it's been amazing and I wish that I was doing it every single day and I suppose that's also the thing of not by not doing it every day I could then sort of start to think yeah I'd love to do this every day until reality hit again but again it's just incredible and that last little bit when I'm there on the shores of the big lake the that was Blakemere and then I go into the tunnel and I'm so emotional and it's like the huge sense of relief and just just everything finally coming to a head and that ultimate that line of and now I'm home with my new home it's like that sort of makes me feel like I want to start crying now watching that 
and had I have known how much I would go on to love and enjoy and how much time I'd get to spend out in all of the places that I travelled on that day between Ellesmere and Whitchurch, you know, super rural, distant sort of locations, a good few hours bike ride back into town if I needed anything. And if I'd have known how much I would go on over these last three years to enjoy everything and just how lucky I would feel to be able to record this now and talk about these last three years, then I I can literally feel, probably tell from the tone of my voice that I could easily end up being, having one of those tunnel moments right now, which I'm desperately trying to avoid. But it just... It's meant the world to me to have had that experience to start boat life, see the best and the worst of both boat life and myself and how I dealt with things at that original week and that, right, you've got a boat now, you've got to deal with stuff. And then, well, getting it back into this region and spending my winter moorings all in this sort of area that's been the local canal around Cheek that I've walked and biked to many, many times over the years. I just I can't believe how lucky I've been really looking back I know this has gone completely off topic of the video but I suppose I'll get things back on topic and say that that original video upload had a few last clips added in at the end from the following day which is what I consider the official final final day of um, the trip back home when I actually took the boat down through the tunnel anyway let's cut to that quick for heaven's sake there's been any doubts as to whether or not I am home over the last few days there's the tunnel through to Ellesmere man I almost don't want to go through it is this not the coolest thing ever here I am, quite literally, in what I suppose can only be called my old house. Um, oh, hello Pippi! My goodness me, there were times in the last week that I didn't think I was going to be seeing you anytime soon. This is the life. And on that note, the journey, and so too must this video come to an end. I hope that you've enjoyed this. It's been a completely different style of video I wanted to try. I know it's been a huge long video, so hopefully you've managed to make it through this far. And if you have, I hope you have enjoyed it for everybody's sake. But ultimately, I just want to say at this moment again, thank you very much to absolutely everybody. When I was posting these videos back in the day, I'd already been YouTubing for a very, very long time and doing all sorts of videos and nobody really ever tuned in and watched them. I'd get a few a few thousand views in a year. And like I say, to, uh, the last million views that came to this channel happened within the space of 11 months. So thank you so much to everybody online for all of the support and for taking the time to come with me on these journeys and peer into my life every week with these boat videos. Thank you very much to everybody who helped me on that original trip. Thank you so much to all my friends and family who over the years have helped me so much in so many ways. I could never, ever list it because it's just, well, it's been incredible. And thank you all. I'm so glad that so many people have been a part of this, both in real life and online. And of course, thank you to all the passing people on boats and the people who've ever offered me help and given me a hand and all the people I've met just on the towpath walking. It's been a truly incredible time in my life and I can't believe that we're coming up to three years of float. If I'd have known how much I would have enjoyed it, I would have done it years upon years ago. So thank you very much to everybody. Right then, I was risking getting over emotional again at that point. So I've had to stop recording for a moment. And now a couple of minutes later, record this actual end with all the plugs to the video. So I will say thank you very much for watching. Feel free to subscribe. Check out my other videos for over 200 boat videos and also a new boat video every week. There's loads more that's kayak based or biking and walking, all that sort of stuff. Feel free to like the Facebook page or even add me personally on Facebook and Twitter if you want to see loads of photos of canal scenery and updates from Life Afloat. And if you'd really like to help me out and feeling particularly interested, then please do check out my books available for the Kindle. Just search Amazon for The Narrowboat Lad or find links to everything just mentioned in the description below. And until the next time, keep it boat worthy. It's been an epic video. Hope you've enjoyed it and farewell.